In this video, I just quickly want to show you how I view hex colors in different files. Like in this file that I have open on the screen, notice that colors are automatically rendered and this is done with the plugin. There's a small inconvenience that I have with this plugin. I'm just going to copy this color that I have here and I'm going to replace it in this other color. Just pasted it. Notice that the color shows here at the end. It doesn't show in the place where it should show. If I undo this change, I don't see the old color. If I reload this file, if I run this edit command, you're going to see the color there, but that is not something that I want to be doing all the time. I could create a key map to reload the file, which would make it easier, but I'm not interested in doing that. This plugin, the one that I'm using right now, is this colorizer and vim dash colorizer that Lua. The repo for this plugin is here. If you like it, give it a star, just the way that I did right now. But I want to show you a different option that I didn't know about until a few days ago. Here's the configuration for that plugin. Basically just the defaults. I didn't add anything else. But if you want to configure it, there's a few options that you can go over. Notice that here you can enable it or disable it for different color patterns. And um, here you have other options as well. If you go through the readme, you're going to be able to find all the details. So like I said a few days ago, I was just in my Lazy Extras section. Let me bring that up real quick. Lazy Extras. And I was just going here over the recommended plugins. I don't think where I found it here. On the recommended plugins, I found this mini dash high patterns. So I just enabled it to test and see what it does. And it does the same thing, but it works a little bit better. So just let me close out of here. I'm going to bring up my lazy.lua file because this is where I manage my extras in LazyVim. Let me go up here a little bit. I'm going to uncomment this so that this plugin is enabled. I manage them here because I want to have the same plugins enabled in both of my computers. So that's why I do it here and not on the lazy extra screen. Now, if I go back to the plugin file, I'm just going to set this to false to set it to disabled. I'm going to quit NeoVim and I'm going to reopen it. I'm just going to restore the session right now and let's bring up Lazy. Notice that MVM Colorizer is disabled. I can clean it up if I press capital X and if we go to capital H, let's look for mini dot high patterns it's showing here and it's active. The distribution that I use is LazyVim. I configured it to automatically update plugins at startup. So that's why you didn't see anything and it all happened in the background. Let me quit out of here and now let's go to the other file that I was working on this colors file. Same thing is happening, but let me grab this color. For example, I'm just going to copy it and I'm just going to paste it here. Notice that the color shows up correctly. I'm going to undo that change. Just going to press U and I do see the colors again without reloading or modifying the file. Let's give it a try in a different color. This one looks a little bit more maybe. Just going to copy it and I'm just going to paste it here. Notice that it happens instantly. So that is pretty great. This is the only type of file in which I look at colors, but you can configure this plugin. Let's go back to my browser. I'm going to bring up LazyVim. Let me search for high patterns here. Let me go to this result. Here you can see the configuration that gets added automatically by Falky in the LazyVim.org distribution. So you can just grab this and copy and paste it. I didn't configure or modify any of the defaults. Just left the defaults there. If you want to go to the plugin itself, just go here to many high patterns. Let me go to that tab. If you like this plugin, make sure to start it as well. This plugin is by Echasnovsky. Not sure how to pronounce it. And he's definitely one of my favorite plugin creators. So if you scroll down here, you're going to be able to find the readme file. Here's a demo. I think there's some options that you can configure here as well, but I'm just using the defaults. Not sure what other options can be configured because it works out of the box perfectly for me. If you want to watch more videos related to Echesnovsky, you can go to his YouTube channel. He did a presentation in NeovimCon six days ago. As you can see here, this was the video that was uploaded. Wonderful video. So I would recommend you to go and check it out to make sure to subscribe and like his videos so we can hopefully see more videos from him. He's also the creator of this plugin, Mini.Files, which is a file explorer in NeoVim. Gives you a preview and it allows you to manipulate files as if you were on a Vim buffer. So I can create files here. I can delete files. I can copy it from one place to the other. Everything using Vim commands or Vim motion. If you want to know more about this media.files plugin, I do have a video in which I go over everything in detail. It's the video shown here, so go and check it out. I'm just going to quit out of here. It's going to ask me if I want to close without synchronization. I just type Y and it exits. So this was a really short video. Just wanted to quickly show that in case that you use the other plugin that we looked at first, which is this nvim-colorizer.lua, and you're planning on updating to something else, I would highly recommend you to go and check out the other plugin. If you have any other plugins that you use for this, please share them with us down in the comments. If you like this video, let me know down in the comments as well. That was it for today. I'll see in the next video.